Um, as Rob said, my name is Dave Olstead. I'm the Growth and Account Management Director at Explore Technologies. Uh, have I pressed that slide? There we go. And today what we're going to do is talk about um, building and keeping your dream team. Um, at Elevate, if anyone went to Elevate recently, we spoke around retention in our industry and we spoke at length around the age-old um, challenge that we have of retaining and keeping our members. And we're going to stick with the theme of retention, but we're going to shift the focus today onto uh, our team because we know that retention in our industry is, uh, from a uh, personal trainer perspective, is a bit of a challenge. I'm joined by some experts on the panel here today um, who's going to we're going to discuss that at, at, de at full detail. So let me just introduce the, the, uh, the panel first. And I'm going to read this out. We've got Ricky Long, who's director and founder of Motion Fitness. Ricky Long is a seasoned fitness professional, is the director of Motion edu Fitness Education, and as a, co as a coach and podcast host, and Les Mills master trainer, he's passionately, he passionately trains and educates fitness professionals, leaving an incredible mark, incredible mark on the industry. With a career spanning since 2004, Rick has garnered recognition as a three-time Ironman finish, finisher, embodying, de de embodying dedication and endurance. His influence extends beyond the gym. Have you wrote this, Ricky? His influence extends beyond the gym. <laughs> Having travelled extensively through Europe to present fi fitness and education, is not only an ambassador for, for Outlaw Triathlon, but also a proud Adidas ex Les Mills athlete. The impact of his expertise is evident with his podcast boasting an impressive 100,000 downloads. Welcome, Ricky. <laughs> and then we have Cherie. Cherie is the owner and founder of Tome Zone Ladies Gym in Derby. Cherie started a career as a dentist. Fun fact, but nobody, ever, nobody knew before. I found that out on Friday, didn't I? Um, Cherie, is uh, Cherie decided to become a personal trainer and qualified in 2016 and started with a small personal training studio, training female-only clients. After speaking with her clients, she discovered a huge need for a ladies-only gym in Derby and took the plunge in 2018. Cherie now provides a fitness facility where hundreds of ladies feel comfortable and get incredible results due to the support and environment that she offers. And I'm sure, welcome Cherie. <laughs> And I'm sure lots of people in the room know Maddie, but I will do the introduction nonetheless. Madeline Cummins, the Account Director for Love Recruitment. Maddie is a fitness, special, uh, fitness specialist recruitment expert with a unique experience of managing the recruitment for some of the biggest brands in the industry across both the UK and Australia. Maddie truly understands the re recruitment needs of the fitness industry, having started in it over 15 years ago and working her way up through front of house, membership sales, sales management and general management, and now with Love Recruitment, supporting with all these roles and many, many more. So welcome, Maddie. And last but not least, Jake Fullerty. Jake Fullerty is Business Development Manager at Explore Gym. What you might not know about Jake, he's also the co-founder of a multi-site gym brand, and he has experience in the gym and health club operations, digital marketing, gym franchising, and consulting. He currently supports Explore Gym in our business development team to help make life simple for gym owners with software and payments. Welcome, Jay. Cool. So I've kind of given the outline of this session at the top as to retention, and we're focusing on our team and uh, personal, specifically personal trainers within um, our industry. But just to set the scene a little further, we know that retention of our trainers matter, and I think everybody who owns a gym, uh, works in a gym, will understand that a consistent team is, is really, really important. It provides continuity. We know that ex, uh, experienced personal trainers, um, they really understand how the gym operates and the, the nuances within each, each individual gym. Uh, and their knowledge and actually relationships with the clients is, is vitally important. Talent retention, we know it's much more expensive, and I, I know Maddie will probably talk about this later, it's much more expensive to recruit people rather than, um, rather than keep them. So investing in your pe people is, uh, is really, really important. As I mentioned, cost saving, we know that uh, part of the recent independent gym survey, uh, one of the biggest challenges facing independent gyms specifically is, is inflating costs. So to add more costs to that by continually recruiting and, and losing our people is going to be uh, a big challenge. And then member satisfaction. We know that our members love familiar faces within the gym. So if you can keep and retain your, your people, as in the personal trainers within the facility, we know that that's going to help that member satisfaction. So before I throw across to some questions, um, we've got some stats uh, from uh, IDEA, Health and Fitness Association, TRP, UK Active, and your PT that I just want to kick off and start the discussion with the team. 
So 74% of gym members who work with a trainer regularly are likely to renew their membership. So this is a direct link back to the conversation we had at Elevate when it comes to um, retain, retaining your members. 91% of members who work with a trainer for six months or longer definitely renew their membership. And on average, the member length of stay increases by seven months for those members who do use a PT. So arguably, there's some, uh, some really powerful stats there that, t that talk around how important it is to retain and keep our team. But I'm going to go to um, the questions now and bring you, you guys in. So Cherie, I'll come to you first if that's OK. We know that good trainers have a positive impact on PT retention, as we've already mentioned. Yeah. In a session uh, in May at the Explore Experience event, Aaron from Your PT um, mentioned that uh, uh, members generally stay seven months longer when they work with a PT. Is this your experience as a gym owner, and what can you add to that, that comment? Yeah, um, definitely. So we have have a situation in our gym where We've got a small group of ladies. Um, they started a group training session that was supposed to last for around four weeks. And we're three years later now, they're all still doing the group session, uh, which is incredible. And what's nice about that is it's the same personal trainer as well. So it's just, you know, if you can keep your staff and obviously your staff need to feel valued within the business, you have to pay them well, have to give incentives, you know, because if, so, if you're charging £45 for an hour session and your personal trainer's getting 12 they're just going to feel really demoralised, you know, look for the next place to go. Um, but in terms of obviously keeping members in the actual gym, paying membership, um, it's just, I hate it, I hate when members commit, we keep our price really low for personal training. So like for example, we'll literally charge £25 for the hour um, for a one-to-one -one. and the group sessions, £15 per client. We have six ladies in a group. Um, so they're basically paying £60 for four sessions. It's really, really low because we want to teach ladies how to train properly and once they have that confidence, they will stay, you know, they'll keep continuing their membership, keep renewing their membership. So that's, yeah, that's definitely <laughs> agree with that. Anybody on the panel got any other comments to that? Is it your experience, Jake, as a, as a gym owner? Uh, yeah, I would say um, it's interesting, you know, personal training, and I come at this from a, a couple of different angles. So I've, I've worked as a, um, in commercial gyms, that's kind of where I came through. Was fortunate enough to then set up a gym brand and go through recruitment of personal trainers. So one thing I would advise is leveraging, um, you know, outsourced support for this. I think recruitment helps us, um, our recruitment agency helps us, you know, recruit good people from day one. Um, but it's interesting that the product of, of fitness is what the gym, what, what we're all here for, right? Members come here, that's what we try to um, deliver. Personal trainers are responsible for that largely. And knowing that we can create a membership, which is, the, the product that we sell and, and that's the amount of revenue we have. Um, if we can increase that by you know, one, two months, um, I think it's quite unique versus other businesses. We're able to um, essentially you know, choose what we charge, right? And I think that's, um, yeah, personal trainers are the, the lifeblood of that. So that's what I would add. Cool. And come to Maddie next. Um, as, as a recruiter, um, I don't know if this slide shocks you or, or um, it's your experience, but the average length of stay for a personal trainer is between five to seven months. So that show, is this your experience from Love Recruitment? And if so, what's, what's the challenge? What's the, what's the reason for that, um, fa the challenge facing our industry right now? Yeah, I mean, we obviously see both candidates and then uh, operators that come to us when they need to recruit. So I guess that bit in between we don't see as much, but yes, there is. And I actually think five to seven months might be a bit generous in some instances, and it's probably a lot lower than that. I think there is quite a lot of disparity between the operator's expectations and particularly with some new trainers that are coming into the industry where they're at with it. Often they've done a course where they can understand anatomy and actually physically train someone, but they don't necessarily have the business skills. So it's really down to the operator then help teach them that, give them the business plans and the training that they need in order to stay. The most successful operators we've seen are people that partner with like YPT, I think you guys have mentioned them, and focus on that learning and development side of things. It's obviously an investment to start with, but 
I think it's worth it in the long run to really give back to your trainers. And I think sometimes there's a bit of nervousness to do that just in case you lose someone, but your chance of losing someone without doing that are a lot higher. Absolutely. And Cherie, if you don't mind, we had a conversation before around um, how you reward and recognize uh, your team. Um, over and above kind of uh, the, the, the monetary amount that you pay them, what, as a gym owner operator, what does that look like for, for your facility? Um, so I basically, I bring my personal trainers into the business. Um, they don't feel like they work for me. It's, we basically graph for each other. So um, all of my personal trainers get 50%, uh, whether it's a group tr uh, training session. So, you know, they do have the potential to make over a hundred pounds an hour. And you just, it's easy to be greedy. And, but you know, when you, it's so difficult to find the right staff. So when you've got the right team, I mean, it's taken me, it probably took me about four years um, to get the right team together. So, yeah, I'm just basically <laughs> made my staff feel valued and um, listen to them. We have weekly motivational meetings as well, which Maya gets sick of. <laughs> One week we're taking over the world, you know, next week it's let's just get a couple of new clients. So it's just working together and listen to your team and listen to what they want to achieve and encouraging as well what's next let's do more what can we do to to get more out of the business basically and is 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 this stat of five to seven months something that you recognize in your facility or is, is yeah. it different um, i mean certainly at the beginning when i set the the personal well basically i had a personal training studio uh, that turned into a ladies gym and it was really difficult for me initially to let let, take a step back um, all of my clients are like no I want you to carry on training but I left to have a baby so I had to get a trainer in and it was really difficult and I made so many mistakes at the start had really <laughs> bad PTs <laughs> you know one turned up in flip-flops to deliver a session one was on the phone for an hour um, turned up hungover it was just a nightmare so I decided to concentrate on the members' side, and if I can't get the quality staff, I just won't offer that service. It's not worth a bad review. Um, but yeah, anyway, I'm really lucky now. I've got a good team, so you, you know, when you've got that, you've got to... And now May has been with me over two years. Um, all of my personal trainers have been in the gym over two years now, okay. so... And the one previously was two and a half years, but then lockdown hit and she decided to relocate. So, right. yeah, I think we're doing well now. Okay, <laughs> cool, thank you. Speaking of training in flip-flops, Ricky, um, <laughs> how, as someone, someone who's um, trained literally thousands, if not tens of thousands of instructors um, across the UK and, and uh, Europe, what, what do you think the real challenge behind this stat is, five to seven months? So, it's, as soon as... As soon as I saw that, the first thing that I thought was, what are gyms doing now for the personal trainer in terms of what their rent looks like, what their commission looks like? Because when people are wanting to become personal trainers, they, in their head, they don't want to be in gyms anymore, on the squat racks, on the treadmills. They want to be sitting in Costa and Starbucks and Bali and doing their PT through from there and Australia. Yeah, so what I'm consulting with a couple of gym owners now is about your PT model. Your PT model is broke because you're making the same PT model in regards to rent and commission that we had 10 years ago. So that's why that stat, the trainer wants to be a PT, goes to the gym, has to clean machines, do reception hours, build a client base, but that's not what they want to do. They want to be a coach working from Costa and Starbucks, as I've said. So how can we, to use a word I hate in the fitness industry, how can we hybrid that and have a rental scheme, which if I'm the PT, I have access to your members, but I'm paying you rent and I live in Belfast and you give me access to your members. So all of a sudden, I'm a PT for your gym, but I don't step foot in your gym. So you'll have some on-site PTs who do group training, do one-to-one -one for those members who want that. And you might have the online PTs, because I, th I think the old stat was like between five and 10% of a gym base will use a PT. Whereas if we were to look at that now, how many percent of a gym base will use a coach? 
people are more susceptible to use, or sorry, more open to use a coach online. So what can, how can the gym flip the rent model to represent what a PT wants in 23, 24, and then what the member needs? It's really interesting. Be, when we throw to questions later, it'd be really um, interesting for me to hear if any of the operators in the room have, have considered anything like that, because I would suggest that that's something I've not come across personally within uh, within our industry, and, and uh, COVID did make, <laughs> COVID uh, overused the word hybrid at some point, um, so it's glad, glad to see you uh, bringing it back, Ricky. Um, but I suppose, Maddie, on, on that point then, how would that affect kind of the, the recruitment journey within our industry? Because I think what Ricky's touching on there is we have traditionally a bricks and mortar industry, um, and now we've got a a competitive landscape that spans far beyond the bricks and mortar of, of, a, of a traditional gym. What do you see kind of the future of recruitment in that space to be if operators did in, indeed start to um, adopt like a bit of a hybrid model? Yeah, it's an interesting one. And I think firstly to start with, if you look at the alternative and particularly in the current market, going into a freelance personal training job in the um, cost of living crisis is quite nerve wracking. So to have a different point of entry like that for someone probably would increase your chance of getting some great trainers in. I think also if you look at what your members are looking after, as you say, there is a demand to have more uh, flexible style of training and have a bit of both. So yeah, I think there's a lot of possibility there. And again, coming back to what we see in recruitment, we probably work on less that would be online because you could probably do that yourself a little bit. But we do see people that definitely don't want to go into freelance or at least are very nervous to. And if you have anywhere that's kind of a, a paid trainer role applications go through the roof so somewhere in the between I think would be great cool all right so um, I think we've touched on quite a few of the, these points already but um, just in, in terms of in a summary um, from a summary perspective I think we've mentioned that to be able to retain good PTs you need to provide the right tools um, the rental model versus you know, see over there. The rental model um, versus the employed model is a really interesting topic that I'd like to pull on that, that thread a little bit more um, during this session. Uh, and I think we've all, as Cherie touched on it um, very beautifully around making people feel involved and engaged within their facility. And again, the continuous education is something that any PT worth the salt um, that I've ever met uh, has really invested them for themselves in their, their continual education. Um, but in terms, of, in terms of the tools, i come to you, Jake. Um, what do you perceive the tools, the right tools for a personal trainer in 2023 and beyond to be that gyms could offer um, to help kind of in, uh, demonstrate an investment in them? Yeah, yeah, great question. Um, Thanks. Tools that, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, let's not beat around the bush, right? Tools are essential. Um, the product is only as good as it can be in the space when the trainer is spaining someone and um, when they're training someone. So the product will allow them and, and tools will allow them to be more efficient to scale that business up. But, um, you know, I, I think back to what you're doing in your place, Cherie, is you're tapping into the entrepreneurial spirit that's within every personal trainer and you're allowing them to, to buy into the business. And I, th I think that's awesome. So I would consider that a tool. Um, and then it's looking about how can we enable more growth for PTs. Um, you know, I, I think about the explosion of um, content creation, how that has, you know, lifted the macro IQ of, of training in general. You know, there are, there are lots of places that you can get great content now. So it's about how can we as gym owners and in the industry enable personal trainers to um, separate themselves further from that, which it was probably a bit easier to do that 10, 15 years ago before all of this was a all of this content was available. So yeah, it's about better diary management, um, the, the omni-channel experience, meeting clients where they want to be met. Um, and I believe, yeah, how that can tap into the member uh, database is, is symptomatic of a good personal trainer as well, because you know, the size of the membership base is ultimately a, a something that dictates how well the PT can do. So I think interlinking those two tools, Dave, to answer your question, the member database and um, you know how PTs can track all of that data and uh, send content and nutrition and communicate as well. I think those are those are where I see the growth happening. Cool. And on that, Maddie, I think from um, you have the the pleasure of working with many different gym brands, 
in the UK and Australia. From a, from a package perspective, when it comes to an employer offering a, an employee, in this instance, from a, a personal training point of view, what do you think the key, um, key like USPs are? What, what have you seen that's really innovative in that space that an employer can offer a, a, a PT to attract them initially and ultimately retra- re- retain them? Yeah, I mean, I think the first thing is obviously what you can offer them in the way of them getting started and helping them actually pick up clients, like you guys said, and giving them that support back. But I think moving forward, it's all about training. What can you give back to your teams to make them even better? Um, 10 Health and Fitness are a great example of this. So they will put their teams through lots of different courses. Um, They're not necessarily paying it for it. They are paying for it, but they tie into what's called a training bond. So the longer their trainer stays with someone, the less they have to pay off. And if they did leave in the first six months, then they would pay it all off. So it's kind of like risk-free, but you're getting fantastic trainers on the back of it. That's something that's worked really well. Um, We have done a few PT surveys as well, and that's something that consistently comes up in terms of what trainers want from their facility, um, their operators, you know, giving that back, helping them be better at what they do. So... Yeah, but I think 10 and that training bond, getting better trainers, not at risk to yourself, is a really good idea. Cool. Thank you. And Ricky, I want to um, come back to your hybrid word again. Because you mentioned around giving digital-only PTs or online-only PTs access to a bricks-and-mortar facility. If you were to rethink that model from the operator's perspective, because I know you yourself as a, as a previous gym owner, how would you, from an operator's perspective, make that connection between digital and um, bricks and mortar, but not necessarily to kind of outsource it to somebody in Belfast, but actually create that connection between the the individual and the online um, environment. There's probably two parts to this answer. I'll I'll, I'll keep it short. So with the consultations I've been having, the idea of me stepping into your gym and being a PT, that might be a threat to you online. So it's how do we make that work for us both? And one of the ways was they, the gym wanted to track the members process as well. So we we're coming up with different software that allows us to, to do that. So if I'm PTing 30 of your members online, that you can see that p- data as well, obviously GDPR protected. But the second part of that is how do I get introduced to your members in the first place? And that's essentially what I'm paying digital rent for. So maybe that's, emails, that's your monthly newsletter. If you're not sending a monthly newsletter to your members, start yesterday. Maybe that's in the Facebook groups, maybe that's in whatever software that you're choosing. So the member gets their welcome email, welcome to the gym, this is what you need to know. These are our online PTs, Ben specializes in strength, Jen specializes in weightlifting, whatever it might be. So as your members then get introduced and what you're doing as a gym owner, you're giving your online PTs that positioning and authority and you're giving your members that guidance, that care. You're getting your revenue from the online PT in terms of rent. And what you might do is you might track that. So if you're training, you know, five members, you'll pay us this. If you're training 10 members, et cetera, et cetera. And it just depends on what software you want to plug in to do that. Um, I don't know of this happening anywhere on the big scale in terms of commercial gyms do it. I've got a couple of independent gyms who are coming around the idea really for like sports specific stuff, endurance training rather than more general PT so it's a little bit easier to track Um, but definitely if I'm stepping backwards into being a gym owner again I, I want to know what service my online PT is given to my members, just from a, a duty of care. I, I would need to know that. So I'm going to come to Jake now on this one. Um, as, a, as a gym owner, operator, and obviously looking to, to franchise um, uh, a model, I think we've proven that by the stats that if people engage with personal trainers, they stay longer. Um, if we support our personal trainers, um, they, they clearly stay longer too. Um, from an operator's perspective, how, and it's not an ROI that I've ever seen measured properly, but what, what do you suggest operators could do tomorrow within their business to demonstrate the, the return on investment from the, the, so not just looking at a PT rental model or an outsource model or uh, looking, at them, looking at a PT as a revenue stream, 
but to be able to demonstrate, actually, this PTX has given me X amount more membership subs across my membership base. How would you, what would you do? How would you advise people to be able to start tracking that at this moment in time? Yeah, I mean, that, that's a great question. Um, Thanks again, again. Dave. You're doing well. Um, yeah, I think first thing is reassess. Um, reassess as a business owner. Do I have the most up-to-date tools? Um, do I have everything in my arsenal so that um, systems are integrated? Um, the good news is this stuff is out there now. There's been so much change and, you know, you're talking about uh, the, the explosion of online training and the reason why that's happened is because there is demand for it, isn't there? So I think um, it's how we merge that into the gym experience. Um, and largely, you know, gyms are the places where personal trainers are training most of their clients. So, um, yeah, th there's many ways. There's dashboards, um, there's, there's data tracking that can happen. I mentioned previously, you know, and I think it's, to put it simple, is reassess. You know, do I have the best tools um, and get out there and look? I, th I think that's, um, that's something everyone could do today. Cool, thank you. Um, I'm gonna ask this question from a bit of a personal perspective. So, in a previous life, I was a personal trainer, right? And I, I, I was really loved my job and I would love to do it forever. But there came a point in my life where exchanging money for time had a ceiling in terms of my, um, my earning potential. And I, I had to essentially put a shirt on and go through the management structure within, within a fitness facility. Now, Ricky, I know you've been really outspoken on how the industry generally, um, some of which are in the room today, undervalue uh, uh, staff generally in terms, of, in terms of the remuneration associated to personal training or group fitness instruction. What's your, what's your thought process on that specific issue and how as an industry can we recognise the impact that they're making but also reward accordingly? PTs do it for the passion, right? They don't do it for the money, they do it for the passion, they love the job. Yeah, because that doesn't actually pay the bills at the end of the month, yeah. So instead of being a time for money kind of transaction, it's a, it's a time for results. So if I, if I have a proven record of getting you fat loss results, it's how much is that actually valued at over three months, six months, nine months, and you have the conversation like that. And then what, what the, from an employment point of view, what the, the gyms can do, or have maybe failed to do is really value their freelance staff and their employed staff and they put them in these different categories. Yeah, the classic one is where the contractors don't get invited to the staff WhatsApp group or the nights out or the Christmas nights out. Yeah. Gym owners in the room, hands up. Yeah, got a Christmas night out planned over the next couple of weeks. Your freelancers are invited, your PTs invited. I'll take that as a yes, yeah, because yeah, they are the ones who are going to serve the members. So it's, it's what are we doing beyond pay to make these uh, professionals feel valued. Um, and it's very easy to sit here and say, like, pay a group fitness instructor more, pay a PT more. It's really, that, that's the easy thing to say. But we as an industry aren't generating a lot more income from new memberships. So I can see both sides of the argument, but it's what are we doing as the gym owners to let our freelancers and our staff grow and have free, free reign as possible in the gym to build businesses, build communities and um, do what they want to do, which is build their business. I think it's a really good point. And, and we measure it as an industry the ROI of any investment we make, but I am yet to see, and hopefully somebody will prove me wrong today in the room, the ROI that the team that we build and, and retain are, are driving to the bottom line because I think once we recognize that, then we may see a shift. And, and I think going back to Jake's point before, it's around the tools to be able to monitor and, and track that and having that within your facility to, uh, to be able to recognize it and then make business driven decisions or data driven decisions accordingly. Um, cool, I am going to throw open Rob, it is uh, my lovely assistant Rob Handy is walking around with a microphone. It'd be great to, if anyone in the room has got any questions for any of the panel today or any of the content or the topics we've, uh, we've discussed, it'd be great to get your, your opinion. So many questions. <laughs> okay, really interesting one, this one. Beth Foster, uh, Retsoft Design, so I'm an architect, interior design. So nothing to do with 
PTs or gyms, but I love the design and, and inclusion of everyone. Anyway, um, so you're super six. Uh, I can hear you want online coaches, because I think that's brilliant. That online thing just works. In-house PTs. So you've got your PTs that go out every day. And then people in the workplace that will go out to businesses, that will go into the workplace, instead of the workplace doing their 10 vouchers a year or whatever. Um, and then the out in the field, so someone will meet you down the woods and you know, climb trees. Um, and then the self-motivated, being self-motivated to go back to your gym to have a PT every day. So what I want to know is, who are your super six? And, and you know, is it your PTs? Is it your everyday to keep the retention in your, in your businesses? Anyone in particular you want to direct the question to? Or should I, uh, should I pick for you? <laughs> Ricky. I'm, I'm going to flake out in that one just a little bit. It, it just, the answer is it depends, which is a poor answer, but to give it some context, it depends where your gym is, who your customers are, your clientele, and what they want. So if you're, classic example, if you're in a big city like London, you're going to have people who are coming to the gym busy before and after work, where if you're in the outskirts, you might have the busier periods in the morning, and the afternoon, sorry, the mid-morning and the afternoon. So their needs are going to be different, whether they want someone stand beside them, putting them through a really, really technical workout or a boot camp style group workout where it's a little bit more intense. And then if, you're, if you live kind of a little bit far out where I am, outdoor training is just everything. So that's what kind of, again, where I, I'm from, that's what people aspire to. Um, so the answer is, it depends, and it also depends on you as to what do you want to create, like what, what gets you excited? Because the, the worst thing I could ever do, I, I don't know if I'm killing myself here, the worst thing I could ever do is open a bodybuilder's gym, because that doesn't excite me. I would not get out of bed at six o'clock in the morning to do that. But if it's a commercial gym that has um, like classes, general fitness, and a couple of sports-specific things, that, that excites me. So first of all, it needs to excite you, and it also needs to suit the area and clientele in, in your area. I think that there's, there's some really good points there, and also um, I'm acutely aware that, and I'm gonna throw this to you, Shuri, um, you've invested personally in, in a facility, right? A traditional bricks and mortar facility. All this talk of kind of online and virtual and hybrid, how does that make you feel as a, as a, as a gym owner? Um, it's an interesting one because I've also got a website, uh, online personal trainers, so I just think you've got to move with the times and it's amazing providing facility, you know, where people can come in and get results. It's very personal, um, but You've, like I say, you've got to move the times and think of the bigger picture, and it would be nice to provide the provide for you know on a bigger scale as well. So there's a lot of work to be done, but yeah, we are we are actually creating a website and an app for online personal training, which my personal trainers in the Tone Zone will be a big part of. So yeah, which also encourages them to stay with me. <laughs> cool. There we go. That's the hybrid model there, Ricky, I think. That's exactly what we're talking about. Any, any other questions for anyone? Abby? Hi, guys. It's Abby from Love Recruitment. Uh, I think it's a question for everyone. A lot of other sectors are moving towards, and actually done for a long time, in terms of real transparency, in terms of the percentage that an employee brings into the business and how much you pay them. So let's say in software, there'll be a percentage that if a salesperson brings in a million pounds, that's how much his salary is. In recruitment as a percentage and actually companies are quite competitive about that going you know, we pay 30 percent of our revenue what you generate goes to the employees do you think we should do the same thing for personal trainers where actually you bring in a hundred thousand pounds and you are going to be earning 50 percent 60 percent do you think that's the thing we should do as an industry like it Anyone want to take that? Yeah, I think, I think personal trainer pay 
more broadly could be looked at and I feel being a business owner within a business what feels more right is a plus equity model you know so if you are bought into the gym in some way and you're delivering such a integral product then I don't believe anything should be off the table I do think the you know this amount per session or a block booking you know for this amount I think will eventually have its day so I think it's a great another great question um, but yeah I think creativity around how people are paid is is the way forward so to um it's a great question, and I think there's some. I want to pull on that thread a little bit more, if I may, Abby. I think the plus equity model is great. Um, you'd have to say more than seven months to be able to get equity, I would imagine. But I think the question, from just from my perspective, is we pay for PTs for the time they deliver, right? And if if I'm right, Abby, what you're talking around is is a bit of a the investment that they're making in the membership as well as a personal trainer. Should that be recognised when it comes to the salary of a personal trainer? If we know that they stay their members stay longer once they're engaged with a PT. Should we factor in membership subs as part of that commissionable, commissionable um, remuneration? And it'd be interesting to hear anybody's comments on, on that one. Um, I, I'm not an operator anymore, so I can't comment specifically to that. But what I was going to say to Abby's point is that we do see this already in some instances. So we have got some boutiques out there, more on the instructor side of things, that will reward their trainers higher. So they'll pay them a higher hourly rate for occupancy, for class feedback, for things like that. So we are already starting to see that, and I personally think it's great. There are obviously some things to consider as an operator as to what time of class you're giving the trainers and to make sure it's as fair as possible, but I think it's a great idea and we are starting to see it happen. Well, all I was gonna say just to answer your question is yes. If I'm an operator, I want all of my staff engaged in driving business into the business. So if that's a commission scale, if that's a reward scheme, um, if that's monthly commission or single payments, whatever it is, whatever works for your model, my, my answer is yes. If I'm, if I'm an operator and I'm not incentivizing my staff to bring business into the business, I'm doing something wrong. Mm. I saw a few hands go up over here. Yeah. Hi, everyone. Uh, Danny Robinson, I'm launching a technology solution to increase member engagement through peer group matching, so matching members together with similar, similar goals and abilities. There's some really interesting topics here. I think the incentivization one is really interesting, increasing the lifetime value of the member, giving the percent, uh, PT a cut of that. Also the hybrid model, Ricky, that you talked about as well. Question about how to increase engagement with the members in terms of matching the right member to the right PT, I suppose. I don't know what you think, you know, if you've got 10 PTs on a wall in the gym, the member might be looking at that thinking, I don't know which one to choose. You know, so Ricky goes back to your point maybe about identifying a niche. So I think, I don't know what you think, maybe there's going to be more uptake here if you've got a sort of recommend, re recommend the system where you can find the right PT for that member. So I'd be interested to get your thoughts on that. Um, because in the industry right now, there is maybe a problem getting personal trainers in the gyms. Yeah. So what gym owners, operators, companies are tend to do, and they'll, they'll take any PT because because we need to. I need to serve my members. I have um, my, my own KPIs to hit. But what would be nice in a perfect world is I niche the PTs that I bring in. So I have fat loss PTs, weight loss PTs, bodybuilding PTs. Uh, mental health PTs pre postnatal that's in the perfect world so that means when I sign up a new member I can sign post them to the PT rather than have the PT profile boards in the gym which <clears throat> nobody looks at let's be honest nobody looks at those and I can present digitally emails that you've just joined the gym you put these on your par queue your questionnaire you want these results these are the PTs that we would recommend for you, these are the, the classes we would, yeah, because we, we tend to have welcome emails anyway. How can we make it really personal that will serve not just the member who's the most important person here, um, but it'll also serve the PT in terms of, of their business? Um, and especially, this is bringing us right back to the start when Cherie was talking about your group classes. Because what sometimes the member thinks they want is they want one to one PT. 
They want that, but actually what they need is a social aspect of group. Yeah, they don't want the one-to-one -one PT after a while. They, they crave the group and the relationships that they, they've built through that. There's, a, there's a, a great kind of, I think it's great saying I heard that people join facilities or join personal trainers for uh, social reasons, uh, sorry, for selfish reasons because they want to achieve something, but then they stay for social reasons. So there's definitely a, definitely a strategy behind that. Sorry, Jake, you was going to say something? Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, being in the software space, that's music to my ears, right? This is a, this is a problem and the challenge we're, we're trying to solve every day. Um, but I would put that sort of back to yourself as well, you know, being the, the founder of a business that's looking to tackle that. Clearly, you've identified a reason to match people, um, you know, for different services as well. I'm keen to hear your thoughts as well on, you know, wh why you see that challenge as, as we do, right? We see automations um, solving this problem. We see the right questionnaire at the start of the membership solving this problem. But yeah, definitely keen to hear, you know, how you see that happening as well. Or not? Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, Adam, are you going to go? Is it your question? Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, Adam Daniel, former facility owner, kind of personal trainer most of my life and various other things, yet whilst I think this is, this is great, we've got on the back of the screen here, I'd challenge that, that I think we're missing out on something in, in, in retaining our personal trainers. And what we can see and understand from the research as well as we look at different like millennials, Gen Zs, etc., is that the motivations, the intrinsic motivations, and as Ricky, as you rightly said, is that most PTs come into this for the passion. However, everyone needs a certain standard of, of living and whatever that is for the individual, that's down to them. Yet what we understand is that different generations are motivated by different things. So if we look at millennials now, sense of belonging, for example, is very, very important to them. And so one of the things, and again, this is more of a, an observation and maybe a reflection for the panel, is how can we, we've got this create more opportunity for involvement, I get that, yet I think we can go deeper as, as an industry, and how can we create a sense of belonging within our teams? And so, for example, something that I, I would do with or any team that I've led and within my business would be, how can I help you achieve your vision? So the first thing that I would do when I sat down with my PTs is, well, what is it you want to actually do with your life, in essence? And one PT, for example, wanted to open their own PT studio. And I was like, okay, great. What can I do to help you achieve that? Because then I'm getting their buy-in from day one. So I think for those people who've got their own facilities or are leading PT teams, I think it's getting that initial buy-in, that sense of belonging, that we're in this together, let's work for each other, to achieve your long-term ambitions, whatever they might be. And that PT did go and open a PT studio, and it's super successful, and I'm very, very happy for them. And also proud that my facility allowed them to do that. So I think we can sometimes look beyond that and go, okay, what is it you're truly trying to achieve, and how as the business owner, can I help you achieve that? So just maybe some reflections on that. I like that, it's a really, really good, good uh, mantra um, in terms of, it's around where you place them rather than keeping them and keeping hold of them. And that's a different, different spin on retention. Has anyone got any comments on, on that approach? Yeah, uh, actually, it's, like, it's easy to say this, but it's exactly what I do, honestly, my old time. <laughs> so we sit down and say, what do you want to achieve? And I'll literally do anything to help my team. And if that is, you know, they want to own their own gym or have their own PT studio, that's amazing because I know they're going to be, you know, they, they represent me well. So... Yeah, I'll do it. I'm, I'll always back, back, the, back my staff to, you know, basically, you know, so they can achieve their long-term goals. So I think that's really important. That's a, no, it's, it's a really, in, it's, and it's actually a 180 on the bond con concept, right? Where you pay and then the more you, the longer you stay, the less you pay. Yeah. No, it's really, really interesting. I, I'm getting dragged off the stage here, so I think we're going to have to call it. But I just want to thank everybody for your, your attention and your, your questions today. If you wouldn't mind giving the, the panel a big hand for their uh, contributions. I know there's a few more hands up and, and whatnot. I know the whole team are going to be, uh, are going to be around for the rest of the day. So if you want to grab them, speak to them, please do. And myself, Jake, and the rest of the Explore team will be over by the Explore stand if you want to come and have a, have a conversation. Thank you very much. Have a great day.